Greetings, investigators. My name is Detective Sins, and welcome to another installment of Synopsins. Today, we're covering a psychological horror movie from 2019 titled Escape Room. Watch out for spoilers, and let's get into the video. The movie has only just begun, and we're presented with a frightening moment. A peaceful, luxurious room becomes the last thing on people's mind. A man tries to get out of the room, which is becoming smaller and smaller. He gets a pin to open the door, but it appears that the pin is incorrect. His efforts were in vain, and he suffocated to death. We are introduced to three characters. Joey, the nerdy girl who excels at quantum physics and is usually anxious in socializing. Relatable. Then there's Jason, a successful young stockbroker known among his co-workers. Next one is Ben, a young man who wants to be free of his mother but lacks financial resources. Three of them each receive a box containing a puzzle. They struggle to open the box until they eventually solve it and acquire a ticket to enter the Minos escape room. The ticket also specifies that the winner would get a $10,000 prize if they are able to complete the escape room. Let me put this into perspective. $10,000 can buy you one thousand boxes of pizzas. That's enough to last me at least about a month. Amanda, a military veteran, arrives at the Minos building the following day. She goes to the third floor with Danny, an escape room enthusiast, after registering. When they get on the third floor, they head up to the waiting room to wait for their orders from the game master. Mike, a truck driver, Zoe, and Jason are among the people they meet there. While waiting, Danny boasts that he never goes into these rooms uncompleted. Mike asks if there are rules to this game. You just have to escape before the clock runs out, Danny replies. Well, no shit, Sherlock. Ben has had enough of waiting and decides to light up a cigarette before the game master comes. However, the doorknob slips as Ben is just about to exit the room. When Danny realizes what's going on, he gets thrilled and informs them that they've already entered the mystery room. Danny instructs everyone to look for a hint so that they can exit the room together. Mike discovers a star-shaped screwdriver on the pages of a book named Fahrenheit 451, but they have no idea what to do with it. Zoe examines the book and swiftly dials 451 on the combination lock. The waiting room heats up instead of the door opening. Assuming that the room's temperature rises to 451 degrees Fahrenheit, it's unsurprising that they'd feel like a roasted turkey in the middle of Thanksgiving. And to the rest of the world that decides to adopt the superior Celsius measurement, this is roughly equivalent to 232 degrees Celsius, which is hot enough to overcook your steak. They see a glass and are finally able to open it. There, they see an Annabelle doll. Hey, uh, are they not gonna get copyrighted for this? Or what, is this like a canon crossover? They should have just written Escape Room, featuring Annabelle. Maybe then they'll sell more tickets, am I right? <laughs> right? No? No, never mind. Amanda panics even more when the room heats up. Amanda appears to suffer from PTSD or post-traumatic stress disorder, or how I'd like to call it, mom slippers. Amanda seems to have been traumatized by fire. Amanda is visibly uncomfortable when she sees the newspaper which reported the deaths of five people in the fire. Amanda's neck was covered with burn marks. Zoe notices a sign telling for coasters to be used for drinks and when they simultaneously push down on six coasters, an escape vent to the next room opens. Jason is the first to make it out, followed by Mike and Amanda. Filling a glass with water will keep a coaster in place long enough for Zoe to exit the room. Since Amanda drank a glass earlier, Ben and Danny rush to cover all coasters with glass until there isn't enough water left. Ben pours the remains of his flask into the final glass and they manage to escape just as the room engulfs in flames. This, ladies and gentlemen, is why you should always bring a little pocket of booze wherever you go. In a cabin, as Amanda complains and wants to give up on the game, Jason manages to get one key but he still needs a seven-lettered name connected to You'll Go Down in History to fully unlock the cabin door. Ben is fixated on the deer headdress hanging on the wall. His memories led him to an accident he had with his friends. If you're still not able to solve this 
arguably simple puzzle, let me try saying the clue with a little bit more swing, yeah? You'll go down in history. Ben comes up with Rudolph as the seven-lettered code, and it works. When the six of them escape from the cabin, they find themselves in a very frigid area. They huddle close together to stay warm, but Danny advises that they should search for other signs. Jason discovers a locked door. Amanda discovers a coat. Joey discovers the phrase, true north is a lie. Mike discovers a fishing pole, and Ben discovers a fishing hole. If I didn't know any better, I would have thought that they're going to go fishing. Using the clue that Zoe got, she finds a magnet. Mike then lowers the magnet into the water and finds a key in the block of ice. They use Ben's lighter to try to melt the block of ice. When Danny picks up the lighter, he falls into the water and drowns. Rip. They all blame Ben and hold him responsible for Danny's death. Jason instructs them to use their body heat to melt the ice block. They successfully escape across the stream into a new door just as the remaining ice crumbles beneath them. The room is an upturned pub with billiard tables. Jason discovers a door above them, but it's missing a door handle. As Mike tries to search for one of the pool balls, Ben notices that the floor is beginning to crumble. Music begins to play as a telephone cord drops from the ceiling, followed by an ear-piercing dial-up sound. The floor falls away each time the music is repeated. Amanda climbs up the wall to search for any useful tools. She discovers a safe that requires a four-digit code to open. Zoe finds a giant sliding puzzle while Mike is desperately trying to crack the code. She solves the puzzle after successfully crossing the floor. Amanda tries the pin as soon as Zoe finds it. However, the pin is incorrect. Another floor falls. To save their lives, Mike and Ben jump to the puzzle rack. However, their combined weight is too much for the puzzle rack. The situation overwhelmed Zoe, causing her to fall and pass out. After regaining her consciousness, she notices that the clue was hidden in plain sight. Remember what I said, they are in an upturned pub, which implies that the code must be inverted and reversed. Ah. Amanda succeeds in unlocking the 8 ball, but she is still unable to cross safely. Amanda manages to throw the 8 ball to Jason before she falls. Jason, Ben, Zoe, and Mike walk into a room that looks like the one that they were in before, right before their respective accidents. As it turns out, they all have the same story. They are the sole survivors. They discover that the purpose of this game is to see who among the only survivors is the most powerful and capable of surviving until the end. A television turns on, displaying the amount of time they have to complete the puzzle before the room is filled with poison gas. Zoe believes that nothing can be changed simply by seeing it. She smashes all CCTV in order to outsmart the game's creators. What? You are trapped! in a room. You don't know any way out. Your only mode of communication is the only thing that connects you to the outside world, the CCTV. And for whatever reason, your instincts to smash the cameras? They don't even care if you died. What part of your tiny ass brain can't realize that they probably couldn't give two shits if their cameras break? This isn't acceptable. This is pure bullshit. I hereby declare that this is a certified sin. At this point on, I don't even know whether Zoe is going to survive, but I really hope she's the next one to die. Jason, Ben, and Mike, on the other hand, locate an EKG or electrocardiography to determine who has the highest heart rate so they can proceed to the next room. Jason believes that the person with the highest heart rate will be the one to open the door. However, Jason is incorrect. He uses a defibrillator to try to get Mike's heart to beat quicker. He forces Mike to have a heart attack and die instead of raising his rate. Genius. Jason then brings the EKG and allows the poison to drop his heart rate to under 50 beats per minute. His risk-taking qualities finally shine through, most likely from his stockbroker jobs. Jason was indeed right the second time. Jason and Ben are able to escape but Zoe resists and dies inside the room.
Good riddance. Jason and Ben proceed into the room which is filled with optical illusions on the wall and furniture. They open the hatch together but they are both infected with a hallucinatory chemical. There seems to be an antidote according to the clues. Ben discovers the antidote but it can only be used by one person. Jason and Ben fight over the antidote until Ben pushes Jason off causing his head to smash to the wall. Ben exits after successfully injecting the antidote into himself. Zoe, on the other hand, apparently is still alive and makes it out of the room. Damn it. Again, apparently, as all of this was going on, Zoe somehow chanced upon an oxygen mask within arm's reach. First of all, why was an oxygen mask even there? Like, what the f What kind of half assed job are you doing as a game master? Do you want to kill them or not? Make up your damn mind! The cameras were destroyed so Zoe manages to escape with all four limbs attached. As much as I hate this development, I just like to say that this reflects well about how shitty life is. No matter how smart, charming, or even good looking you are, if your luck is down the drain, then f all, am I right? The room takes us back to the beginning of the movie. To escape being crushed, Ben manages to control the flames in the fireplace and utilize it as a crawl space. He enters the last room and is greeted by the Game Master, who is responsible for the escape room's designs. The Game Master explains that all players' themes are randomized at all times. Ben plans to leave with all of the money, but the Game Master attempts to murder him in order to keep the game's secret hidden. Fortunately, Zoe rescues Ben just in time. Ben and Zoe are treated for their injuries. But by the time Zoe comes with the investigators, all of the evidence at the escape room facility has been destroyed. After locating their geographic coordinates from their logo, Zoe persuades Ben to join her on a flight to the Minos escape room HQ in New York six months later. Unknown to them, the game's designer is already one step ahead of them, plotting to trap Zoe and Ben in yet another game by turning their flight into a simulated escape with a 4% chance of survival. In conclusion, how would you actually survive this escape room? Just don't go. You survived a disastrous event and you are the only survivor. What kind of idiot accepts a letter promising you $10,000? Not only that, the survivors decide to go back a second time. Sometimes it's best to just count your blessing and just move on. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you like this video, go ahead and click that like button down below. Subscribe if you want to see more content just like this and ring that bell to get notified whenever we post a new video. So investigators, you are dismissed.